Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to one of my next projects here. Uh, this is a fairly quick one. Um, I've been waiting to do it all winter, but uh, other things have gotten in the way. So anyways, guys, if this is your first time here, don't forget to smash that like button. Uh, also hit that subscribe button down below. Okay guys, so we've got some maintenance and uh, some new upgrades to install on my Carf Tudor. Now this is my airplane. Um, it's an older airplane now. It's going on, uh, this is its eighth season. Probably has 350, maybe 400 flights on it. Uh, I've owned it now for two years. Previous to that, one of my friends owned it. And uh, so this, this stock airplane has the, uh, the straight stock struts. So they're a, they're a straight strut, I'll insert a picture here. And um, they've served the airplane quite well. The original wheels are very, very hard. And when you're driving down or, or taxiing down or taking off down an asphalt runway, they, uh, they tend to skate all over the runway because they're not a very um, uh, grippy surface. And also the, the straight retracts and just the design of the airplane. So what we're going to do is I've ordered some struts from Bayotech and uh, so we're going to install these. We've got a main strut for, for each side, new electric brakes, and uh, we also have the trailing link nose strut as well too. Um, I've never had a problem with the stock nose strut. Might keep it the same, not quite sure, but uh, we'll see how that goes. But um, the way this airplane's laid out right now is we've got electric retracts. They're, they're Bayotech C50 retracts, and uh, the, 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 the gear doors are air and the brakes are air. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of uh, uh, juggling around, running different lines, things like that. So it's not just simply putting new struts on, we have some work to do. So um, the brakes are now gonna be electric and um, looking forward to it so we can have some modulation in the, in the brakes. So uh, we're also gonna do kind of a general check over on this airplane, guys. We've gotta redo the main gear doors for the main struts because they're not gonna work uh, the same way that the old ones did. And uh, so we've got quite a bit to do on this airplane. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, list it down below. All right guys, so I've given the plane a quick wipe down. Now what I'm gonna get done here, uh, essentially what we need to do first is we need to assemble the plane. So I'm going to uh, uh, basically put the wings on, have to get the gear down and uh, figure out some of the wiring and what we're gonna be doing with, with the wiring. So anyways, um, I'm going to take the, uh, the canopy off and uh, the cockpit out and that, that will kind of expose everything. And then we'll take a, a better look at the wiring and see what we have to do. Okay guys, so some of the things we've got going on here, um, we have the main doors um, open and close are these two lines. This line is the brake line, so we can eliminate this one, which is good. And then we've got these um, 12 pin connectors and uh, the one nice thing about these 12 pin connectors is one lead is open for adding electric brakes, which is awesome. So if you look down here, right there, that's the, uh, the lead for the brakes going to the 12 pin connector. So that is perfect. We've already, uh, we were basically already set up to switch this to, um, to electric brakes. One of the things with these connectors is they're fairly old. This one's good. On the other side though, that little tab is broken. And then I know on the wing side, um, the the male portion of the connector is actually uh, the little uh, keeper or lock mechanism is broken. So what I'm going to do is I've got a new set of these 12 pin connectors. I'm actually gonna replace them um, just so we get the new locking mechanism. One of those little things that I've been thinking about doing over the past, uh, year and uh, now we're actually going to make it happen so when you have those thoughts do them um, okay so we can eliminate the brake line now the nice thing about the brake system is it's fairly independent of the main air system so this t right down here is the brake line that lower one and that comes to this um, Jettronic valve right there. This is the main door valve. So this Jettronic valve can be eliminated. Um, there's a T right behind the gyro there, which uh, feeds the main gear doors and the brakes. So it's gonna be fairly simple to, um, to redo the air system. Um, the air system for the brakes and the doors was not two independent systems. They were plumbed together. So um, we'll still be able to use those two air tanks, which is One's down there and one's right there. So that'll be fairly easy to switch um, to eliminate the, uh, 
the um, air brake system. So that's pretty straightforward. Other thing we're gonna do here is, um, I was having some signal issues last year. So I moved my receivers around and uh, the, the way this plane is set up is we've got the, uh, the central hub um, from JR. Okay, so we've got one of these and then we've got two X bus outputs, which uh, one of them's feeding this receiver, the other one is feeding the receiver that's right underneath here. So what I'm actually gonna switch this receiver to is, anyways, we're gonna switch that out for this one. So that's gonna add multiple antennas uh, versus uh, just the two on the receiver and then the, the uh, that one there, so. Um, this whole setup works, flown it many, many times. I'm just thinking in the future, if I want another receiver for a different plane, this is gonna be more handy for me than this. So this will, will work better in this plane and I'll have uh, a spare receiver as well too. So that'll be a fairly easy switch. We're gonna um, obviously set up the, uh, the antenna very similar to this, so it works out very much the same. But uh, so that's kind of the initial thoughts of what we need to do here. That's where we're at. I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the, the receiver out just cause we need to put the plane inverted on the, the stand over there just to access the gear and everything. So we'll do the receiver first and then we'll get the main wings on the plane. All right guys, so I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup here as far as the wiring goes. I know this looks messy, but it all gets tucked underneath. These are all the, um, the X bus converters. So these all plug into the central box and uh, they convert the X bus signal to uh, PWM signals. So that's why that looks like that. But um, I went to charge or turn things on and my batteries just went pew and completely died. Uh, right now I'm actually cycling my batteries. So these two Buma packs were in the nose and um, I haven't used them a ton, but uh, I don't know why the voltage was completely uh, zero. Well, not zero, it was like down to like three volts when it was plugged in. So anyways, I've charged them. Um, discharge, I'm discharging them right now, so we'll see how much capacity comes out of them. So we're gonna do that a couple times and see if we can use these batteries or if we need to replace them. And then one other thing I wanna clean up here is, so I've got a receiver, so um, right underneath the top section here, and I actually had my gear channel plugged into that receiver, and um, which is fine. But uh, if one of the receiver, like if this receiver was to fail, then the gear won't work. So I would rather have the gear plugged into the X bus system. And um, then if one or the, one receiver or the other fails, it'll still work. So I don't know why I didn't think about this before. So my light controller, which is just this cheapy light controller thing now plugs into that receiver. So if that receiver happens to fail, um, it's plugged into the gear channel that uh, that'll still work or that that won't work anymore, which isn't a big deal. That's for the, the nose and then the gear light. The gear light is the, the red indicator light saying gears down. Um, then we've got the actual uh, gear sequencer, which is right on the other side of this uh, firewall here, is plugged into the X bus system into one of these converters. So it was a very easy switch. I just switched the leads and it's done. So anyways, that's something simple that I finished um, cycling the batteries right now. Now I'm gonna get the uh, the receiver here, the new uh, Infinity receiver or whatever it's called. I'm gonna get that all mounted up here as well as, as one of the next steps um, before I continue on with anything else. All right guys, the receiver's been mounted. Um, <clears throat> just to show you what uh, we've got for antenna diversity here. So the three satellites, so this first one, is going at uh, about a 45 degree angle. This middle one, straight up. Uh, there's one on the other side of the fuselage there. It's so right there and the antenna is coming straight out sideways. And then we've got the receiver underneath the front glass there, right here. And we've got one of those antennas coming up the windshield at a 45 degree angle and one coming across. We should have plenty of signal diversity. So uh, that's done. Now um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on getting the air system taken out, uh, putting new connectors on, things like that, and getting this stuff cleaned up. I wanna get all that done before I put the wings on. And uh, that's the goal anyways, so. All right guys, so because this end is still good, I'm actually gonna keep this on 
and uh, not bother replacing it. So this one will keep. Now the other side here, um, because that little cross piece is broken, um, this is the new one. So rather than cutting these wires and recrimping all the little uh, the little ends, I figured I would try and get them out, which I was uh, successful at. So basically what you gotta do is you take this little poker, you poke down the little tab, which is pretty typical to a normal servo connection, it's just a little bit different design. Uh, pull the wire out individually, slide it in the new, uh, the new piece and make sure it locks. So I'll uh, show you guys how I'm doing that. Okay, so we just give it a little push. Comes out. Okay, and I just want to make sure that that little tab is still sticking up, uh, which I look at a side profile and it still is. And the uh, reason we do that obviously is just to make sure it's gonna still stick in the new spot. So uh, if we do these one at a time, we uh, there should be no issues with mixing them up. So you can hear it click and it's in. So that's how we do it. We're gonna go through and transfer all these wires over to the new plug, and uh, once that's done, I'll continue on. All right, guys, so the old air system, the um, the brake controller was right there. Uh, the old air lines were run over here. Anyways, those have been taken out, and uh, I did up two uh, custom servo leads here for the brake system. So, as I mentioned previously, the plug-in from the connector already existed right there, so I just uh, plugged that in and uh, put some heat, heat shrink tubing on it, and then did the same thing on this other side as well too. So get those plugged in. Um, this connector has been switched, that was no problem. Everything worked out good. And I'll show you a little trick with the, uh, the heat shrink stuff. All right, there's a lot cheaper way to buy this stuff. Um, so I get this at Princess Auto, it's one of our local suppliers. So this is made by Power Fist, I don't know, it's their their brand name stuff that they have. Anyways, you want to get the three inch size. Uh, there's 10 feet of this. So you can make up tons of this stuff. If you buy this from the model store, uh, you can buy a bunch of maybe two feet in total for like $10. And I think this stuff sells for about five bucks. Uh, sometimes you can get it for a couple dollars when it goes on sale, but the three inch size is perfect. It uh, fits over the, uh, the, the female ends of the uh, servo connectors no problem so little tip for you guys all right guys man that's a big plane crazy um okay so we are obviously the plane's upside down uh basically what we're going to do now is we need to extend the gear and uh just kind of see what we're up against and then i'll show you guys kind of the details about what we're going to be doing and Let's cycle them again. All right, guys, so that's what it looks like with the cover off. Uh, I always find it handy when I'm doing something like this just to put a piece of masking tape on the wing, uh, either for notes about stuff that you need to fix or to point out little things like the backing uh, from those two uh, screws came loose. So just a couple little things to fix there. So uh, anyways, we have a bunch of cleanup to do here. It's been a couple years since we've done anything to these retracts. So I'm going to take these off now and um, and uh, continue on. All right, guys, so we got the Lado actuator there and uh, the wire goes through the former and the wing and then comes to this point and was soldered together. So I just cut this and uh, what I can do is I'm gonna make a connector here with uh, the power box connectors. All right guys, so these uh, existing pins are substantially longer than the um, pins that came with the new struts. So if you look at how much is in, uh, of the pin is inserted in the previous strut, about that much, which lines up there, right? And then the new strut, there. So quite a bit less uh, pin is inserted. Now that's not a bad thing, I'm just pointing that out. Uh, what I was actually thinking about doing was perhaps adding a little spacer here so our leg length ends up being exactly the same. Um, 
just something to think about that when that retracts that would actually put it back into the same spot and uh, my concern is just having the wheel um, the same distance sticking away from the airframe so I may do that I'm gonna definitely examine it and see there's the difference in leg in um, length so we're looking at uh, maybe a quarter of an inch not a whole lot might just go with it the way it is but um, it's definitely different I like the look of the straight strut and everything but I'm looking forward to the um, the ground handling of the uh, of the uh, these units all right guys so I was just doing some figuring here and stuff and trying to figure stuff out so this is the uh, the stock pin that came out and uh, had to heat it to get it out but a uh, very very long pin and this is the new replacement pin so uh, the new replacement pin fits in the strut by 20 millimeters and uh, goes in the uh, the retract unit by 30 millimeters so this is a 50 millimeter pin and uh, that 30 mils that just fits into the uh, the trunnion just hits the bottom set screw. So now the other thing I was asking one of my buddies about was the overall length here of the strut or the whole assembly is slightly shorter on the new one. So it's only five millimeters. It's going to be hard to get in the picture there, but you can see the difference at that camera angle. So it's five millimeters difference. Tires are smaller. You can see there. And uh, I think that's primarily or really the, the reason that it's different. Um, maybe a little bit in the strut as well too. So anyways, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to keep it that way. I was thinking about possibly cutting this strut, adding a, a spacer in there, but we're just going to do it the way, way it is. Um, one of the suggestions that a uh, fellow flyer gave me was with this wheel setup, it's possibly a, a negative angle of attack with the, the, uh, the new ones. It, it ends up being zero or positive so anyways guys that uh that's what the struts look like now what we want to do is we want to get the um the strut itself all assembled so we have to lock tight everything uh put the uh the brake and everything on so gonna get that set up if i encounter anything fun i will share it with you all right guys so here's some of the parts that we've uh we have so we've got 15 of these screws and so obviously five and five go in the main wheels they get inserted on this side and so they will stick out of the uh, those little beveled edges there and then when those stick out the uh, the brake units fit over top and uh, the wear wear units for the brake so that's why you want to obviously use these ones um, the angled ones go on the the front wheel so um, so I'll put the wheel and tire and everything together uh, we're gonna use Loctite on all this stuff and um, so the, uh, the actual brake unit itself, basically we're gonna thread that in. Other way, sorry. So we're gonna thread that in, put red Loctite on it. The, uh, the brake unit itself slides over top like that and the wheel gets inserted. And then there's two nuts here. So one of the nuts um, is the, uh, the nylock washer. So that's gonna go on to hold the wheel on. And then we've got the, uh, the other washer which is going to hold the axle assembly on. Okay, so 10 mil wrench, tighten that down, and we are snug. Okay, so we want to put our brake on, and our brake we want to have routed to the back. So the brake's going to go like this, and we're going to route the, uh, the wire up the leg like that is the plan. Okay, so brake just fits over top nice and easy. Nothing uh, too special going on there. Now we've got the wheel and tire assembly, so we'll put this together. Um, I believe these are, there's no direction to these things, so we can put it on either side. So we'll just fit that in, fit the other side in, I'm trying to get it lined up initially so we don't have to worry about turning it. So that's done. We're gonna use blue Loctite on the other ones, and those are a 2.5 mil. Okay, we won't tighten them all up yet. We're gonna get them inserted and then we'll go around the circle and skip a screw. Same thing you're doing when you're tightening up lug nuts on a car or a vehicle. Okay, so now we tighten up one, we skip one, and we skip one, 
And with a five bolt pattern, you end up going around all the way around the circle if you continue to skip one. Okay, so all, all have been done. Now we'll just go back, give them their final snug. Okay, so that's done. The wear pads for the brakes, we're gonna clean those off because they've got uh, like Varsol or something on them, or not Varsol, um, some sort of uh, protector material so they don't rust. Okay, so we just clean that up with rubbing alcohol. There's kind of a, 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 a surface that already looks like it's been used before, and there's kind of a shiny surface. I'm gonna put the surface that looks like it's been used down first uh, for the brakes to contact against. So just so these things don't lock up, we are gonna put uh, a drop of mineral oil on there. This is just shock oil from RC cars. Just to make it a little bit more smooth flowing. Don't need much, just a tiny little bit. All right, so the way this works, just so you're aware, is the, uh, the actual friction surface here floats. And uh, this is a magnet, an electromagnet. So when you increase the magnetism, um, it pulls the floating piece towards that piece. And the more magnetism, the more, more it pulls that towards it. So that's how the whole system works. Now we'll put it together. Hopefully it spins smoothly, which it does. That's a 10 mil as well. Okay, so that tire is rubbing against the, the rim which is a problem. Okay, we need to do some investigating on that part and uh, figure out what we're gonna do. All right, guys, figured out what I needed here. Basically, we need to add a washer in between the uh, back of the strut and the brake assembly. So, got this off, because um, I started undoing it, thinking I'd have to space this out a little bit, but uh, that's not the case. So, anyways, I'm gonna use blue Loctite this time, because red was uh, pretty serious. I don't remember red being that serious before, so. Anyways, we'll assemble it with blue Loctite, and that should probably be just fine, considering we also have the uh, nut on the back side, so. Okay, so what we need to do here is basically install the, the washer, and we have to install the washer before we install the brakes. Okay, so brake's been installed. You can see the washer in between there, and we still have about half of the uh, the little uh, tabs preventing the brake from turning, um, connecting with the, uh, the strut itself. And we should be good to assemble. And hopefully that washer spaces everything out. Anyways, both, uh, both wheels are done. Um, so what we need to do now is we need to take these pins for the main gear and we need to grind a flat spot into them. So just like that. Um, the pins only stick out of the strut 30 millimeters. Okay, so what we will do is I'm just going to mark that with a sharpie. And then I just take these to my bench grinder and uh, we will grind a flat spot in them. Okay, flat spot has been ground in there. So what I wanna do is I wanna put this portion of the pin in the retract first, because we are not doing flat spots on the gear itself or the strut itself, because we've got two sets of, uh, of uh, Allen, Allen heads there holding the, uh, the strut on the pin. Okay, so this, this has to be lined up obviously where the flat spot goes, so we'll do that first then install the strut, get it lined up. Okay guys, so the retract is installed. We're just uh, getting the toe end set up on the strut. Um, so I have measured the, the fuselage from this side to this side and measured it all the way down and the fuselage is square. The reason I measured that is so, you know, if there's a little bit of angle on the fuselage, obviously that's gonna screw up your measurements if you're transferring the measurements to the wing. So I just measured from the actual uh, fuselage over 33 centimeters. The number doesn't matter, 
but uh, you're just transferring that mark evenly. So uh, right now, uh, it's gonna be hard to show you guys, but right now we've got uh, essentially almost zero toe in. We're gonna add just a couple degrees of toe in, which is right there. And uh, that strut is in its final place. Keep the, the strut nice and stable. One is tightened down just uh, finger tight. So what you do now is you just go through and lock tight and tighten up each of the uh, the pinch bolts um, or the set screws individually and then the strut will be in its home and then we'll uh, we will zip tie this wire down to make it uh, nice and clean. Okay so that part is done. Uh, we do still have to get the door uh, figured out. All right guys so the uh, what's this the right wing is basically ready to go. There's a shot of the wiring, um, the uh, power box wire there is the new brake wire. Uh, while I had the wing apart, I just took the Robart uh, uh, air actuator apart, uh, cleaned it out, put some new um, some new shock oil in there, um, some I guess it's silicone lube, and uh, basically got that all serviced up. So. Um, I also changed the angle of the door a little bit. This door last year was giving me a little bit of problems, so it was actually opening at an angle like this compared to where it is right now. So it was actually getting stuck and uh, was having trouble closing. So hopefully this fixes it. Uh, it feels a lot smoother and it's, it doesn't have that stuck spot when it's fully open. So this side's almost done. I'm just gonna finalize the uh, the new mechanism for the door here and I'll show you guys what I'm going to do once I get it sorted out but uh, we're pretty much done on this side once this side's done obviously we can flip over to the uh, the other side all right guys so what I'm going to do for the gear door here is uh, this little cable keeper here which you can you can stick to different parts of fuselages put a zip tie through it and uh, like this and then um, you can cable uh, or zip tie cables too uh, we're going to use this on the strut. So what we've done there is we've gotten it uh, fairly high. So our zip tie is going to stick to the top part of the the, uh, the strut there. And then as the strut actually retracts, that zip tie is just going to work its way down the, the actual leg. So before I actually use any shoe goop to put that on, uh, I'm going to put a zip tie around there, check and make sure this works. Uh, if it works good, we'll screw this down. We'll uh, put some shoe goop around the perimeter just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, that's the uh, the solution for the door. So let's see what happens. Guys, one of my primary issues so far with this modification of this gear has been um, where to route the uh, the brakes. So I was initially had the brake going behind here and then feeding out behind the strut. Problem is when the strut would come up, this wouldn't slide like it typically does. It just gets bunched up. And then I remembered, oh yeah, there's these little loops right there, little holes where you can feed the brake lines through. And that's the way it's supposed to route. <clears throat> so, we should be good now. The little bump I have where I join the two uh, pieces of this snakeskin stuff is actually kind of stuck in there, which is good. And um, <clears throat> we just have the... Uh, the shrink tubing actually routed through that little uh, little slot right there. So this I think is going to work out good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, um, get the strut hooked back up with the zip tie and uh, we'll check and make sure it works. All right, guys, I think everything looks like it's working good. Um, I'll uh, what I did from differently from the last little clip was I took the tape off the bottom here. Um, it was just causing some binding in in everything. So. We'll see and make sure this works. Okay, so that retracts enough. We can tighten that zip tie up just a little bit to make that door sink down. And then the last check is, is the door, which is good. Okay, so I think we are successful. Nice, I like it. I think it looks uh, looks good. I think we got a winner. So basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this side of the wing back together, uh, just putting the screws back 
and um, making sure we route the cables and all that stuff. And uh, once this wing's done, we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other wing. Now, what happens usually with these builds is I find when I do one side, one wing, whatever it might be, it takes a long time. And then when I do the other side, it goes by nice and quick. So I'll uh, update you guys with any progress here. All right, guys, so I've completed the left wing now. And uh, like, <laughs> like typical in, in my world, the left wing has worked out much better than the right wing did, which was the first one we did. So we are going to take, a, take the, uh, the right wing apart a little bit. Um, and it's basically just the wiring that we need to change. So um, just the, the nice loop down here with the wiring worked out better. So I'm just gonna modify it to, uh, to reflect that. But I'll show you guys what this gear looks like now. Okay, goes down all the way, door closes nicely. Also, I adjusted and serviced the, uh, the air piston there as well too. So uh, before this, again, just like the other one, this gear door was opening way too much. I actually put a wheel collar on this side so it uh, creates a mechanical stop, which uh, works out fabulous. And then here's the gear extending. So it works good, very happy with it. Brakes are awesome. And uh, we're just gonna take care of the other side. All right guys, so just working on the nose retract here. Um, I was going to take it out, but I think I'm just gonna leave it. That last Allen key bolt is a real pain and I was able to get the strut out without uh, having to do any more. So I think I'm just gonna clean that up um, and uh, kind of leave it in there. I still have to do the other three bolts back up, but uh, yeah, I think if we just clean it up, we'll be good. So I've got the old retract out, and this is obviously the straight leg one. Um, and that's the new one. So uh, right now I'm not going to worry about spacing that uh, the retract unit off the firewall. I took a nice close look, and I think I've got a little bit of space there, so hopefully that all works out. Um, so what do we need to do here? We've got the uh, steering pin, which I hope is the same size. Oh, and we're lucky. It's the same size. Good job, Biotech. Okay, I was going to reuse the, uh, the pin that was in the old gear, but uh, I think it's Loctited in place, which is okay because we have a new pin. Uh, we just need to, need to uh, put that little flat spot on the end. And that little flat spot is for this little crown that goes on top that uh, prevents the leg from coming out. But um, when you put this into the, the trunnion, you don't use bolts to secure this because the leg's gotta, gotta turn, right? So um, that's why this needs to be on top so it doesn't uh, allow that leg to come out. So anyways, guys, I'm gonna, uh, this is the new pin. Just put a little flat spot on the end of the head and, uh, and then we'll continue on with uh, installing this leg. Okay guys, front retract, strut, and everything is done. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Still need to hook the servo up and stuff, but uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put some air in the, um, the retract system and just make sure everything works. All right guys, so we got air in the system. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Beauty. Everything looks good. Awesome. All right guys, so with the underside being done, I'm just gonna uh, clean up the entire underside of the plane. Uh, get it all nice and polished up and ready for the flying season. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to pop the wings off, flip the fuselage over, put the wings back on, and uh, we're going to do a, a little bit of, uh, we're going to start the turbine up and things like that. But uh, we're almost done this project. Thank you to uh, one of you guys who suggested the spoon option. This is so awesome. Uh, just getting some color matches done for, or some checking some colors for one of the wings that I'm working on. And uh, first time doing this and it works great. So looking forward to continuing this. Thank you so much. All right guys, I'll try and get the reflection here and 
there are certain planes that I think look really good weathered, like my F-18 over there. And then there's planes like the Snowbird, uh, the Tudor, that just has to be shined up. It looks so good. Um, if you can see, the this section hasn't been done yet, nor has this wing. There's still a nice shine to it. It might be hard to see it on the camera, but in person there's a bunch of streaks and smudge marks. This side's been cleaned up. That other wing's been cleaned up and just awesome. <clears throat> so I'm not uh, not paid at all for this stuff. I'm not sponsored or anything. I think I got this from Canadian Tire, uh, this cleaning wax stuff. Works great on cars, but it also works good on planes too. So I'll show you guys quickly what I, uh, what I do here. So just shake this stuff up. Uh, you can see some grease and grunge marks all over here. It's basically a cleaning wax. My wife bought me a whole pile of this stuff. So, And then what you do is you just go over the surfaces and uh, this cleans up any of the gunk marks. And then you let the, uh, it's a lot like using a wax. You let the wax like um, haze over, I guess is the best term. Kind of get hazy and opaque. <clears throat> okay, so that's step number one. Doesn't take very long. Like this section here is already already getting getting hazy. You can see it there as well too. And then, so this is the one that I use to put the wet on. Pro tip, don't put your microfiber cloths on the Velcro. Okay guys, then you take the dry microfiber cloth. Uh, this section's all hazy. And you just wipe it off or polish it if that's the term you wanna use. Gets rid of all the little minor scratches and makes the surface look outstanding. All right, guys, um, just have to do the nose section here. So the uh, the underside's almost polished up. Once that's done, like I said, we're gonna flip the plane over, um, check some things, and I'll show you what we're checking here. All right, guys, so we've gotten to this point by myself. Now I need to uh, enlist some help from my wife and my daughters. So. Anyways, uh, gonna get this thing on the ground and we will do some of our final uh, maintenance checks and gear checks. Oh guys, I gotta say, I like these gear. Wow, the wheels are so nice and squishy. Front nose. If anything, it might be a little soft, but uh, we'll see once it's full of fuel. But uh, that's awesome, love it. Love, love, love it. Okay, so some of the things I'm checking, just doing a visual on the uh, the airplane um, because the other legs were a little bit longer. I think the, uh, the back end of the plane would have been a little bit higher than it is right now. So right now it uh, looks good, probably has a little bit of positive AOA. I think it's angle of attack and uh, I'm okay with that. And if you lift the front end, I mean, it's got uh, plenty of clearance there, like the back, the back tail starting to touch there and you're never taking off or landing with this plane at that angle. I mean, when you're, when you're landing, you're just putting a minor flare on the plane and it uh, works great. So, okay guys, with that done, I'm going to, uh, gonna run the turbine now.
All right, guys, so she runs well, um, happy with everything, and uh, that's basically it for the, uh, the spring maintenance and getting stuff ready. Uh, next thing we're gonna do on this plane is we're gonna uh, take it out to the field, range check it, um, and do the re-maiden on it um, with the new gear and the new, uh, new receiver. So really not a whole lot, but the important thing is the, uh, the range checking as well too. Um, anytime you guys change anything in a plane, I've, I've ha actually lost a plane um, seven years ago because I changed something electrical in the plane and I didn't range check it. And maiden flight, if you want to call it that, uh, lost radio contact and it and it is gone. So, um, anyways, make sure you're uh, you're range checking your planes all the time, but especially after you do something electrical to it and. Um, that's basically it guys for the uh, the Carf Tutor. So hopefully you enjoyed putting this gear in and some spring maintenance. If you have any questions, make sure you list them down below. Um, if you guys have any comments, suggestions, list them down below. Uh, always interested in hearing good tips. So um, this is your first time here guys. Don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button down below. When you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And uh, that's it, take care and we'll see you in the next video.